and they're moving the chains impressively now. And they've got a first down at the 48-yard line. You look at Richard Dent, four and a half sacks so far this year. That's Bovaro starting in motion. And the deep handoff goes to Walker again. Into the uh, tackle of Steve McMichael. No score. This is the opening drive of the game for the Eagles. The Chicago Bears took the drive, the opening kickoff, and moved it to midfield. And here comes William Refrigerator Perry, whose role now with the Bears has really been reduced. But it's very specific. One that told us last night that he wants to use Perry against teams that run the ball. The Eagles run the ball very well, and he will also use them in short yardage and goal line situations. Second and six. Calvin Williams comes back to the near side. Brister flips it out. Intercepted by Richard Dent. Walker and Brister are chasing him, and he is tackled from behind. Richard Dent with the pick. The Bears had seven turnovers that they got against Tampa Bay, and they get a big one here as Brister is intercepted by Dent, who returns it 23 yards. He's done this eight times in his career. Vern, but this one, uh, you know, you talk about Dent, watch him on the line of scrimmage. He sees Walker come out on this pass route, and he sees the quarterback. He drops back, and he picks it off. The one word that uh, people use about Dent is that he's crafty, but usually they're talking about how he rushes the passer, not how he picks the passer off. Butler's first time ever kicking here at the vet. And he's the quarterback now. He hands it off to Herschel Walker. And the gain is out to the 21-yard line. The Eagles, of course, also lost. Uh, here's Broderick Thomas, your old teammate, and Richard Dent having a little conversation. Now Brister gets in his face. Well, Dent is going to do a lot of talking out there, and he's going <laughs> to let uh, Bubby know, hey, why don't you throw me another one of those little picks there? <laughs> and Broderick's got to be a little bit frustrated because he was doing a good job pass protecting, and... Dent just fell off and picked it off. Broderick Thompson said yesterday that his first year in San Diego, he got into a fight with Matt Millen, and you broke it up, <laughs> right? Uh, mistaken identity. There's no way I'd get between those two big guys. <laughs> Second and nine. Brister. Fumble. Picked up by the Bears. The opportunistic Chicago team has its second turnover of the first quarter. Trace Armstrong forced it. Dante Jones recovered it. Two turnovers in a row now for the Eagles after starting the uh, day so well and so impressively. Again, Brister's looking for somebody to get the ball to. Doesn't tuck it away. Armstrong comes from the blind side, and the Bears take for inside the 30. Third and 15 after the loss of 10. The blitz threatened again. It's an eight-man front for the, for the Eagles. They're coming. And Harbaugh goes deep for Conway. Battle in the end zone. Touchdown, Curtis Conway. He whipped Ben Smith. And in the fifth game of the year, the Bears finally get a big play, and they finally get to see their number one draft pick pay off. Dave Wanstead said last night it's been the best week of practice the team has had because for the first time all summer and fall, they had a full complement of players. All 53 were able to work out. And most notable of those was Curtis Conway, the number one draft choice, who just gets the touchdown. Extra point is up and good. Only his third catch of the season, a 32-yard touchdown toss, Curtis Conway. And a pretty good average, Vern. His first touchdown of his NFL career, and it's a highlight. Bears lead by 10. They won a 35-30. This, this is a team that uh, the Bears have had a lot of success against the Eagles. Harbaugh, play action. Craig Hayward. Watch out. The earth moved, and he ran out of bounds. Well, he got uh, half of that 300 pounds leaning too far to the right, and he couldn't pull it back on the field. Stepped out of bounds, or he might have scored. Great play action uh, fake by Harbaugh as he fakes it to Anderson right there, and uh, Ironhead sneaks out into the secondary. 
Yeah, yeah. sneak. <laughs> yeah, it, see, he, if he was holding the ball in his left hand, he might have been able to keep his balance. He got too much of that 300 over to the right, though. Watching him tightrope is not a pretty sight. That's no Walenda there. Hayward hit behind the line on first down. That'd be a real thick tightrope for him to get on down the field. Yeah, he got about 300 leaning right, but there was still 75. <laughs> <laughs> the inbounds. One more time. <laughs> Never to be confused with a great Walenda. But it did pick up a first down. I mean, he wasn't even close. Every time his right foot down, it was out of bounds. Third and eight. Harbaugh left side. Wendell Davis first down. Nifty pass, Harbaugh to Davis. Just getting the number 84 in motion. Harbaugh dances to the right. Being chased, lets it go, caught by Getney. And he's inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Flag is down. Flag is down in the end zone, and it appears to be a holding or pass interference against the Eagles. Wendell Davis was working his way towards the uh, baseline of the end zone, and that's close to where the flag is. But that was an impressive catch and run by Gedney, wasn't it? Yes. Doing a Mark Bavaro imitation. He just worked out. Holding. This week. Number 21, the defense. That was declined. First down. That's where we're more comfortable seeing this guy carry the ball <laughs> is between the tackles. Depends on your perspective. If he's coming at you, I don't know how comfortable you are. We were talking with Andy Harmon last night about Hayward. He played against him in college. He had some disparaging comments to make about him. Here's Hayward. He won't be talking in a negative way very soon, though, because Hayward gets it down to the one-yard line. Well, you know, Hayward outweighs everybody along that defensive line of the Eagles. He's, you know, reportedly 290 pounds. That's a lie. He's Boy, more I got than some that. money on that one. Yeah, it, you know, Simmons is 280. Andy Harmon's 265. Millard's about 250. And, you know, Flores is about 250. So it's pretty good when your fullback weighs more than the guys trying to tackle him. Third and goal from inside the one. And it's already 10-0 Chicago. Play action. Harbaugh. Run or throw. Touchdown. You talk about a moment of truth, Vern. Harbaugh faces a moment of truth here on this touchdown run at about the two-yard line. Do I go for the corner or do I go out of bounds? He went for the corner and got the touchdown. And now he's paying for it. He got hit by about three guys. Now the extra point from Kevin Butler. It is up and good. There comes a moment in every quarterback's life when you got to make a big decision for the betterment of the ball club. This comes near side with Waddle. Conway he is wide right. See if they might take a shot here on third and four. Right side caught by Gedney. And the big rookie tight end from Syracuse makes his second catch. That's a gain of 11. Seth Joyner is going to come in a blitz here on this uh, third and four situation. Vernon, watch Gedney read it. Just come out. Nice pickup by Neil Anderson. That allows Harbaugh a nice, clean throwing lane to a very impressive rookie. And aren't the Bears glad to have Gedney back in the lineup after breaking his collarbone in training camp? They really do like him as a uh, as a part of their passing offense. First and ten, play action. Now they'll take a shot, maybe. They go deep for Davis. And incidental contact at the 25, and Davis looks like he might have been hurt. His reaction when he went back for the ball was kind of unusual. And he almost pulled up. It might have been a hamstring. Yeah, the injury bug uh, bites the Bears now. 
Hard to tell looking at his legs here. That ball was uh, underthrown by Harbaugh because he had two eagles right in his face. This could be a uh, a popped hamstring here. Watch Davis try to adjust to the ball, and his legs just go out from under him, as you said, Vern. That looks terrible. Well, Wendell Davis is down at the 25-yard line. The injury bug continues to hit both teams. Wendell Davis in obvious agony. 17-0 Bears lead. Time has been called. And looking at his right knee, it looks like he stopped to plant to go back to uh, make an attempt at the ball, and his right knee just gave way. Mates wait as Wendell Davis is going to be helped onto the cart. Clyde Simmons, of course, went out with an injury early in the first quarter, but uh, came back and is back on the field. Ken Rose, the special team star of the Eagles, was also taken off the field. He has an ankle problem, but that's all we know about that. And uh, the patience with which they treat Wendell Davis obviously appreciated. And you can see Richard Dent here and, and William Perry Longtime teammates of Wendell Davis and Butler wants to get rid of all the domes and have all the kickers kick in uh, uh, windy weather as he has to do so often in Chicago. Now have they immobilized both legs? That's, they have. It, that's incredible. They have braces on both legs of Wendell Davis. Never seen that before. I remember one time when Jim uh, John Thomas of the 49ers an offensive guard uh, was injured. He injured both knees on one play. But that was many years ago. Never have ever seen a wide receiver uh, injured in such manner. Right now it's 17 nothing. First downs this quarter, seven to nothing. So the Eagle offense has been non-existent, and there's some confusion with the officials right now. Maybe some fan in the stands is blowing a whistle or something. You know what? I bet that is what it is. You see that in basketball every now and then, but uh, I feel sorry for Dale Hamer. He's going to try and yeah, there's the whistle. That's the guy, the guy in the crazy glasses. <laughs> hey, Maude, you ain't going to believe what happened to me today. That's unbelievable. Only in Philadelphia. <laughs> Why would you bring a whistle to the game? In case you got drowned in the suds. <laughs> Mark Carrier with the tackle. <laughs> it was the pressure again of Richard Dent and Steve McMichael Mingo. But watch as uh, the pressure comes, as you said, from Dent as he comes all the way around. He was in the playbook that time. They knew that this sprint out was coming. But I know this has got to be an NFL record. Two defensive linemen <laughs> intercepting passes in one game. Danton McMichael, and that is the second career interception for Steve McMichael. He had one in 1986. Here's Hayward. Here's Brister, sacked for the seventh time. And Richard Dent has two and a half of them. And he added an exclamation to that sack, Vern. Threw Brister down with disdain. Seven sacks on the game for the Bears. Richard Dent. That wonderful year of 1985 when the Chicago Bears won the world championship. They tossed back-to-back -back shutouts in the playoffs. And the interesting thing, of course, is that there's a man named Ryan with ties to both of these teams. Left Chicago, came to Philadelphia, where he was the head coach and is now down in Houston. Accepted by Maurice Douglas. And a member of that great 85 team and uh, MVP of that Super Bowl, Richard Dent, has had a whale of a day today. Two and a half sacks, four hurries, three knockdowns, and an interception. And he, he had a pass def uh, defense as well. Mm -hmm. With 23 seconds remaining in the game. The extra point is blocked. Where our final score was 17 to 6, Chicago.